Hey, and welcome to this beginner's guide to Google Slides. It's Google's equivalent to Microsoft PowerPoint or Apple's Keynote. It's in the cloud, it's super easy to use, and most importantly, it's free. My name is Eduard Stunga from Videoplasty, and let's get started with this tutorial. In order to use Google Slides, you need to have a free Google account. But if you are already using Google Drive or Gmail, you already have a Google account. If not, just go ahead and create a free Google account on google.com by clicking the sign in button on the top right, then create account. So with your Google account created, you need to be logged in to access Google Slides. To access Google Slides, you can open your Google Drive, click the new button, go to Google Slides, and you can either start a blank presentation or create one using an existing template. Alternatively, you can access Google Slides on slides.google.com. This is where you will see all your recent presentations. You can see the ones owned by you or others shared with you by other people. To create a new presentation, you can use the plus button on the bottom right. It will ask you if you want to create a new presentation from scratch or use one of the existing templates. Let's have a look at the templates. If you scroll down, you will see Google Slides offers you quite a few options, grouped in various categories. We have personal templates, work templates, and education templates. When you create a presentation, it's always helpful to use an existing template as it will save you a lot of time designing it and it will already look great. But for this tutorial, I want you to learn the mechanics of how Google Slides works. So we will start with a blank template. Welcome to Google Slides. On the top, you will see a lot of tools and tabs we will use. On the left, we have the list of all the slides. Currently, we have only one slide. And in the middle, we have the preview area where we can edit the slide. First, let's set the aspect ratio of the presentation. Go to File, Page Setup, and select the aspect ratio that you want. In most cases, I recommend you stick with widescreen 16 by 9 as is the most popular aspect ratio nowadays for monitors and projectors. Next, we need to add a title to our presentation, which is very simple to do. Go to the top left corner where it says Untitled Presentation, click on it, and start writing your own title instead. To start editing the text of your slide, click anywhere on it and start typing. With the text selected, you can change the font, change the font size, make it bold, italic, or underlined, change the color of the text, change the alignment, add a numbered list or a bulleted list, decrease or increase indentation, or simply just clear formatting and revert to the default settings. To change the background of a slide, you need to have the slide selected, then click the button that says background. You can change the background color by using one of the existing options from Google. You can also add your own custom color by using either a hex code, if you have a specific color code, or just use the hue slider, then select the more precise color on top. You can also use a gradient as a background, so it goes from one color to another. You can also use an image as a background by uploading your own image inserting it by URL from your Google Photos or Google Drive or simply by searching for an image online on Google Image Search.
To change the layout of the current slide, you need to have it selected in the slide list, then click the button that says Layout. Here you have quite a few options to choose from depending on what you need. Some of the most popular ones are Title Slide, Title in Body, Title into Columns, or a Main Point. To create a new slide, you go here on the left, right click in the empty area and select New Slide. For this one, let's just go to Layout and select Blank so we can add a few elements ourselves. First, let's see how we can insert text into our slide. To do that, you need to use the Text Box tool. You can use it and draw an area in which you want to write some text. To change the size of the text box, just grab it on the border when the cursor changes to an arrow. Then resize it as you want. Keep in mind, this will adjust its content and change the text layout to fit the new box accordingly. To insert a link, you need to have an element selected or a portion of the text. Then click this icon with a chain to insert link. You can link to existing slides in this presentation, other Google documents you have, or simply just paste an external URL. Next, I'll show you how to insert an image into your slide. And you can add an image from multiple sources. First, you can upload an image from your computer by navigating to where you already have some images selected for your presentation. You can also search for images by using Google Images which shows up on the sidebar. Other options are to add images that you already have uploaded on your Google Drive. Or if you use Google Photos, you can also browse and use an existing image from there. And the last option is to use the camera of your device to take a photo right then and there. To move an image, you need to click on it, hold down the left click and move it with your mouse. To resize an image or any other element from Google Slides, you need to have the element selected, then use any of the points on the edge to resize it. Keep in mind, if you use the ones here on the sides, it will distort the image. If you want to resize an image and maintain its proportions, you need to grab it from one of the corners. To rotate an element, use this handle on top. To delete an element, you need to have it selected and then just click backspace on your keyboard. To crop an image, you can double click on it and you will see these new black bars on the edges. Grab them and adjust accordingly until you are happy with your selection, then click anywhere outside the image to finalize the crop. You can also mask an image by clicking this arrow here and then selecting a shape that you want to use as a mask. To undo any of the changes you make in Google Slides, you can either use this back arrow or use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl Z or Command Z on a Mac to go back to the previous change. To insert an audio file into your slide, you need to go to the Insert tab here on top, then select Audio. The only way to add audio is by adding files that are already in your Google Drive. So you need to first upload the audio file to Google Drive, then it will appear here. Now you'll be able to play this audio using the play button while editing the slide, and you can also play the audio when you're presenting it. Adding a video is pretty similar. Go back to the Insert tab and select Video. With videos, you can add a video from YouTube by using the search bar to find it. Or, if you already have the YouTube URL, you can just paste it in the next tab. You can also add a video directly from your Google Drive. So again, if you want to add a video from your local computer, you first need to upload it to Google Drive, then it will show up here. You can also insert charts into your slide, so let's go ahead and use a pie chart, for example. To edit the contents of this chart and modify its data, Click on this arrow and select Open Source. It will open a new spreadsheet in Google Sheets. 
Here you can modify the data and you will also see it appear in real time in the preview of your chart. When you're done, close the browser tab and go back to your presentation. You will now have to click the update button to refresh the changes and have them appear in your slide. Inserting a table is very easy. You can use this tool to easily select the size of the table that you want with as many rows and columns as you need. Then you can edit the contents of each cell by clicking anywhere inside it and writing any text that you want. Google Slides also allows you to add shapes, which you can use in all sorts of creative ways. Let's assume you want to create a mind map, so let's go ahead and do that. To duplicate a shape, right click on it, click copy, then right click again and paste, then move the shape in your desired position. Once that is done, you can connect the shapes with lines. When you draw a line from one shape to another, you can connect it by using those points. Then, when you move either one of the shapes, the lines will adjust accordingly and keep connecting the two shapes. To add the text in any of the shapes, you need to double click on it and start writing. You can format the text as you want, by aligning it centrally or making it bold, for example. To start the presentation and go into slideshow mode, go to the first slide in your presentation, then click this button that says Present. To navigate from one slide to another, use the spacebar key on your keyboard or the right and down arrow keys. To navigate backwards, use the left or up arrow keys. To exit a slideshow, press the Escape key. As you probably noticed, moving from one slide to another is pretty abrupt as there is no transition animation between slides, so let's add a transition. Select the slide to which you want to add a transition, then click this button that says Transition. Here you will find a list of the available animations. Google Slides offers less options than PowerPoint or Keynote, but a few options that it has are very smooth and elegant, so personally, I don't mind. You can preview the transition by clicking Play. To adjust the speed of the transition, use this slider to make it slower or faster. Click this button to apply the transition to all the slides in your presentation. Now let's enter presentation mode to see how it looks. The same way we add the transition animation to the entire slide, we can also add an animation to an individual element. To do that, you need to have any element selected, then click where it says Animate. It will automatically add the default fade-in animation to that element. Let's do the same for those two images as well. Now we have all of them here in order. To change the order of the animations, just swap them around like this. To remove one of the animations, select it first, then click the trash icon right next to it. You can change the animation style by using any of the animations available in the drop-down menu. You can also adjust how fast the animation takes place by using this slider on the bottom. By default, all animations happen on click, but you can change what triggers the animation in this list. In case you want two elements to appear together at the same time, use with previous on one of them. Now let's enter presentation mode to see how this looks. Keep in mind, to trigger those animations on click, you need to use the spacebar or the arrow keys on your keyboard. Google Slides makes it incredibly easy to collaborate with other people and work on the same file in real time.
you can use this button on the top right to share the presentation with other people. You can get a shareable link by clicking this button and change the permissions of what people can do using this link. They can either only view it, make comments, or even make edits on the same file. You can also invite people via email and set the same permissions as before. When collaborating with people on a document, you can comment on various parts of the presentation to make suggestions. To add a comment, right-click on any element you want, such as an image or text for example, then select Comment. Once changes are implemented, click Resolve to make the comment disappear. Please note that these comments only appear when you're editing the slide. They won't show up when you are presenting. When you're done working on your presentation, you can publish it on the web. You can do that by either sharing it as a link or embedding it onto a web page. Once you click Publish, it will give you a link that you can share or a custom HTML code to embed it on a page. You can also export the Google Slides presentation locally to your computer. Go to File, Download, and depending on your needs, you can export it as a PowerPoint presentation or a PDF file. You can also export just the current slide as a JPEG, PNG, or vector image here. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you learned a lot of things from this tutorial. If you got to this point, please leave a comment to let me know. I would also appreciate it if you could gently tap the like button. Doing both of these things really helps with the YouTube algorithm so that I can continue to make more content like this. For royalty-free animated stock GIFs that work incredibly well in Google Slides and will help you make more engaging presentations and captivate your viewers, please visit videoplasty.com. If you want to see more tutorials like this one and other amazing video marketing content, subscribe to my channel right now. Don't forget to add me on Instagram as well to keep in touch. This was Eduard Stinga from Videoplasty and I'll see you soon.